Hey developers, I'm Kamesh, Lead Developer Advocate at Snowflake. Today I'll show you how to use Snowflake's REST API with Postman for a quick and easy automation. We will cover how to authenticate with the API, manage resources, and handling access control. By end of this demo, you will learn how to programmatically manage Snowflake resources using its API. Let's jump into our Postman environment and get started. All right, developers. Let's kick off our Snowflake REST journey by setting up our Postman workspace. We will need two key things, a Postman collection for our API calls, an environment to store our Snowflake credentials. If you are new to Postman, take few minutes to explore its basics. It will make this journey much smoother and easier. Ready? Let's dive in. To begin, clone the Snowflake REST API demo repository from github.com slash snowflake labs slash snowflake dash rest dash postman dash demo dot git. If you don't have a postman workspace, create one. In my case, I already created one called tutorial, which I will use for this demo. Let's navigate to the tutorial workspace. Click import, select folders and navigate to our cloned repository collections folder and import all the collections. Now, let's do a similar thing importing the tutorial environment. Click import again, choose files this time, navigate to our clone repository, select the environments and select tutorial environment. To streamline our workflow, let's set up a few environment variables. Before we continue, let's verify that the Snowflake CLI is properly installed and configured. I'll be using a Snowflake connection name trial, which I had set earlier as my default Snowflake connection. In the Postman tutorial environment, we have few variables to set. The base URL, the URL that we use to call our REST APIs, the Snowflake JWT token, and the Snowflake username that we need to use. Let's set these values. To set the base URL to Snowflake account URL, we will use a JQ command line tool to extract and format the URL from the Snowflake CLI command output. We will use the same approach to configure the remaining variables like Snowflake JWT token and Snowflake username. Take few seconds to copy these values and update your tutorial environment variables. Now that we have configured all the required values, Click save to update the environment settings and finally make sure to set this tutorial environment as your default in Postman. Perfect. Now that we have configured our Postman environment with all necessary Snowflake credentials, let's begin testing our API endpoints. As you see in our API request, we utilize two key variables from our Postman tutorial environment. The Snowflake JWT token is used as our authorization bearer token for secure authentication. The base URL is automatically substituted in the API URL to form the complete endpoint. In the headers, we set content type to be application slash JSON. Use the Snowflake authorization token type header to be from our variable Snowflake auth type, which defaults to key pair JWT. To create warehouses using the REST API, let's run the Snowflake tutorial warehouses collection. From the available methods, we'll specifically select only the create or alter warehouse method. Since our goal is to create multiple warehouses in a single operation, we'll leverage the data file feature. Use our warehouses file from our repository, which contains the specifications for all the warehouses we want to create. Before proceeding with the warehouses creation, you can review the data file contents using the preview feature. This allows you to verify the warehouse configuration before execution. The prerequest script automatically processes our JSON data file, extracting the values and setting variables. These variables will then be dynamically substituted into the request body before the API call is made. Finally, the post response script validates the response and ensures that it contains the correct status code and message. Click Run Snowflake Tutorial Warehouses Collection to create the warehouses. Awesome! We have successfully created two warehouses. 
Now we'll perform a new run specifically selecting the resume warehouse method. This operation will start all warehouses that are currently in suspended state. We'll click again, run the Snowflake tutorial warehouses. Great progress with the warehouse API operations. We have learned how to create multiple warehouses and manage their states. Now let's advance to the next step, creating tables using the REST API. To create the tables using the REST API, let's run Snowflake Tutorial Tables Collection. In the interest of time, I have created the database and schemas using the Snowflake Tutorial Databases Collection and Snowflake Tutorial Schemas Collection that are available in our demo repository. From the available methods, I'm going to choose only create or alter tables. We will create two tables in two different databases in a single operation. And to do that, we will leverage the data file feature. Use our tables file from our repository, which contains the specifications for two tables that we want to create. Let's preview the table configuration. As it shows, we will create a customer's table in tutorial demo DB and to do's table in to do app database. Let's run Snowflake Tutorials Tables Collection. Great, we have successfully created the two tables. Let's try a new run of the collection. This time, I want to drop and undrop the tables and finally use get tables to get the tables again to make sure everything is intact. So what I'm going to do is deselect all. I'm just going to reorder. I just want to drop the table. Then I want to undrop it. And finally, I want to get it. And we'll still use the same tables.json data file that we created last time. Now run the Snowflake Tutorials tables collection again. There we go. We're able to successfully perform other operations also on the tables REST API collection like undrop and drop. Now that we have covered the core Snowflake objects, warehouse, databases, schemas, and tables, let's move into the security by showing how to programmatically manage access to these objects using Snowflake's REST API. This is particularly useful when you need to automate role creation and privilege assignments across multiple environments or as part of your CI CD pipeline. Whether you are a database administrator, security engineer, or DevOps professional, learning how to use Roles REST API helps automate role management and security tasks, making it easier to maintain security controls at scale. To demonstrate role creation using the REST API, we'll be working with the Snowflake Tutorial Roles Collection. This collection contains pre-configured API requests that will help us to create and manage roles and their related grants. Let us run this Snowflake Tutorial Roles Collection. This time, I choose only Create Role. Use our roles.json file to create three roles, namely Tutorial Admin, Tutorial Analyst, and Tutorial Developer. Click Run Snowflake Tutorial Roles. Great. We have successfully created the three roles. The next step, we'll explore how to apply grants onto these roles. With our databases, Tutorial Demo DB and To Do App already in place, let's proceed to change the ownership of Tutorial Demo DB to the Tutorial Admin role that we created in the previous step. First, let us verify the current owner of the Tutorial Demo DB. We will run a single method, get database owner. Since we are going to query only one database, I'm going to pass the database name as a query parameter. As we see from the output, the database is currently owned by account admin. To transfer the ownership, we'll perform another collection run. This time, I'll choose only grant on role. For this, we'll use the grants.json data file, which has a grant defined for tutorial admin, the three grants that we already have here, and then click run Snowflake tutorial roles collection again. Great. Now we have assigned the grants to the role. However, this role is not yet useful since it hasn't been assigned to a user. In the next step, we'll grant this role to the current user using the Snowflake user REST API. 
For granting the roles, we will use grant role to user method. Create a new run connection again, but this time we'll only execute the grant role to user method. For this, we'll use user underscore roles.json file that has a grant to assign the role to the current Snowflake user. Click run, Snowflake tutorial runs roles again. Awesome. We have successfully assigned the role to the user. To verify that the current user can now query the customer's table in the data schema of the tutorial demo database, let's run a Snowflake CLI command. Brilliant. The tutorial admin role has now been granted to the current Snowflake account user, allowing us to access the database schema and query the customer's table successfully. And there you have it. We covered the essentials today. Snowflake REST API can do even more. We trust this helps you to kickstart your automation journey. Be sure to check these resources in the video description. Snowflake trial account sign up, demo sources used in this tutorial, Snowflake REST API reference documentation, and Snowflake Postman public workspace. Thanks for following along with this demo. We wonder what amazing things you're going to build with these APIs.